Now, to, just, to take this discussion further, India and SA ties further, we are joined by senior researcher from the Institute of Global Dialogue, Dr. Pilani Tembu. Good morning to you, doctor, and thank you so much for joining us here on Ground Report this morning. Some people are saying that this uh, discussion or conversation between the Prime Minister and President Jacob Zuma is long overdue. Would you agree with that? Well, you might say it's long overdue, but remember that uh, Modi was only elected in 2014. Correct. Um, and last year, there was a huge... Um, uh, conference in India, um, the India-Africa um, uh, Forum, uh, which was quite a successful one, managed to invite 42 uh, leaders from across the continent, um, South Africa, of course, being among them. Mm -hmm. But you have to also understand that there are ongoing ties at ministerial levels between these two countries. Um, they relate, whether it's within the BRICS, they relate whether it's within the G20, they relate also in terms of the IPSA. Um, so these countries are in constant uh, contact and mm -hmm. one could see this uh, visit actually as a follow-up to the previous uh, India-Africa Forum Summit, a very successful one um, for that matter. And obviously uh, it's not just about South Africa. South Africa is a very strategic country of course for India but it's within the broader African mm. context of India trying to solidify its relations with the continent. Mm. Now put it into perspective for South Africans who are sitting at home and thinking, why is this relationship and these discussions so important mm. for our country? Firstly, expand on the relationship between India and South Africa. Mm. Well, you have to understand firstly that India was one of the first, if not the first uh, countries to actually boycott the apartheid regime. Mm -hmm. um, India played an instrumental role as a member of the non-aligned movement um, as a member of the G77, basically advocating positions of the global south, okay. um, t taking a, an anti-colonial position which put itself actually, um, which actually compromised its own position in global politics. So it stuck its neck out um, in the most difficult times for South Africa. And one could see, you know, the situation now has obviously much improved. Today, these countries are emerging powers. Mm. Um, they have major issues, basically, to discuss in global politics, whether it's the reform of the United Nations, um, whether it's bringing issues of development within the framework of the Sustainable Development Goals, um, whether it's through the climate talks, mm. um, but also um, through India's position, uh, exceptional position as part of the nuclear uh, members, if you may say. I mean, India is not a member of the uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Mm -hmm. However, because of the unilateral uh, move by the United States in actually granting it um, some kind of an exemption, uh, we have to understand that, um, you know, these are some of the issues that will be dominating uh, the talks. Mm. And what do you say to some individuals who say that this meeting is, is, is here for discussions with regards to that nuclear suppliers group mm. or that board? What would, you, what would your reaction be to that? Well, look, uh, previously, actually even uh, earlier in the year, the president of India and also the foreign minister of India, uh, they've already been making uh, trips uh, throughout the continent um, and they have been discussing so in Ghana uh, you had discussions mm. in Namibia uh, you had discussions specifically on the nuclear issue okay. it is an important issue um, for India because uh, you have to understand the current special position India has uh, or at least the exception uh, that India has been given uh, in terms of not joining the non-proliferation uh, treaty it's through a unilateral move by the United States. That means that the United States essentially could withdraw that mm. at any time mm. if, it, if it chose to. I don't think it would in the immediate term, given the strategic nature of the relationship and also considerations of China. Um, but I think it's important for India to gain support within the global south and South Africa is obviously quite a pivotal country mm. in terms of garnering support uh, globally, but also more specifically within the African continent. Because mm. in terms of the nuclear and non-proliferation treaties, uh, South Africa also played quite an instrumental role in terms of the Pelindaba Treaty, which basically is um, Africa's version of the non-proliferation uh, treaty. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important for India 
um, to get uh, South Africa's um, endorsement in that mm. regard. Now, we do know that the Prime Minister has just uh, gotten, we landed in South Africa from Mozambique. We'll continue that mm. conversation a little bit later. But earlier we saw President Jacob Zuma and the Prime Minister uh, emerge at the union buildings. There was huge pomp and ceremony. And then they went into discussions behind mm. closed doors. What do you think was at the top of the agenda uh, during those discussions? Well, I definitely think, um, you know, firstly, it's a follow-up uh, to the to last year's India-Africa uh, summit. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think they, they obviously should have discussed the nuclear issue. I mean, it is an important issue on the, on the, on the topic, uh, on the agenda, rather. But also, I think um, issues that they could be possibly discussing involve... Um, the IPSA, the IPSA has really been relegated and that's the India, Brazil, South Africa, um, you know, platform, uh, which was really seen as a platform for emerging uh, uh, powers, but at least democracies um, from uh, emerging powers. Mm. Uh, it has been taken over by the BRICS and, um, you know, we haven't had a summit of the IPSA since 2011. And it doesn't seem to be high on the priority um, for Brazil. Um, not sure if it's on if it's on top of the agenda for India. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa officially says it is important, but we haven't seen any movements uh, regarding the IPSA. And of course, an issue which should have come up is the uh, India hosting of the um, of the BRICS uh, summit in October. Mm. Um, India is hosting it following uh, Russia hosting it last year. Um, so I do think, you know, some of the critical issues uh, there will be discussed. Something that may not uh, be officially on the agenda, um, but which has become important uh, of late, um, is, you know, India and, 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 and the African continent have been growing people-to-people -people, uh, mm -hmm. relations. So India have been sponsoring a lot more scholarships for African uh, students. Um, okay. They've also been training a lot more um, professionals within the continent uh, from the civil service and so forth. And um, uh, this year has actually, that people-to-people -people relations has been marred by um, xenophobic attacks um, in some Indian cities mm. uh, towards African immigrants. Uh, we recently saw the Minister of Foreign Affairs in India meeting with uh, her counterparts, uh, her ambassadors within India, and to basically try to, you know, to calm them down and, and assure them, reassure them that um, the Indian government is on top of this. And that, that was following a Congolese uh, student actually being killed um, oh. in India. So it, that might not officially be on the agenda, um, given that these um, two leaders will probably be speaking high politics um, when they meet. Mm. But I do think it, 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 it's, it's some of the issues which come up when um, countries, and, 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 and in, in our case, not just South Africa, but the African continent, when they deepen uh, relations beyond the economic and the political to also including people-to-people -people relations. Mm. Now let's expand on, on the topic of relations. There's been a lot of talk about the imbalance in trade relations between South Africa and India. Is there an imbalance and what can be done to, to correct those? Will those discussions be taking place as well? Well, those will be taking place. Mm. Uh, at the previous address um, by South Africa's own um, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, um, she addressed um, um, a few months ago a business delegation in India. Mm. Um, and, 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 you know, she was basically stating that um, at, the mo at, the, at that time, I mean, ties, at least trade ties between South Africa and India were sitting at around 15 uh, billion uh, US dollars um, and that they, they would be looking to increase those, uh, you know, to 20 uh, a, a million. By, um, by 2018 um, mm. was the date that was given. Trade imbalances um, are not uh, uncommon in, 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 um, in global politics, or at least in global trade. Uh, you may have imbalances with some countries, but with other countries, you, you know, you, you obviously benefiting more. What's important, I think, for South Africa is to really look at what India um, has been doing. Right now, there's an initiative that uh, Prime Minister Modi 
is uh, championing uh, within India, um, which is this Make in India initiative, uh, where they're trying to obviously produce more uh, goods uh, within India mm. and make India not just a services um, center, because we know that India, in terms of the services industry, is one of the leaders uh, globally. But they're trying to make India also a manufacturing uh, power mm -hmm. uh, within the world. And we know that uh, prices have been increasing in China. Uh, we know that China's economy is currently restructuring and they're moving out a lot of their excess production uh, to the region, but also um, beyond that uh, to some African countries. So India sees this as an opportunity. India has a large population which um, is said to overtake the population of China if it has not already overtaken it by now. Um, and it also has relatively low costs uh, in, in, in terms of the, uh, the labor market. Now this creates opportunities for India to, to, to increase its share of uh, manufacturing and, and production. Uh, globally. Mm -hmm. This aligns quite well with what South Africa is also trying to do. South Africa is also trying to industrialize. Um, we are, compared to many economies on the continent, we are relatively uh, industrialized, but there are concerns that South African economy is de-industrializing. So I think there's lessons to learn um, from India in terms of how they are going about doing that. And of course, low cost production. India is very good at low cost production. They've recently manufactured um, a, a cell phone, um, which will cost, I mean, a, a smartphone, which will cost a fraction of what uh, smartphones are on the market. Yeah. And that's obviously going to revolutionize the industry. Uh, we need to learn um, how they're managing uh, so those processes. So a lot processes. to be learned. Definitely. Well, thank you.